let's play some Victoria 3. My name is Jumbo Pixel, and this is episode one of a hotly requested Victoria 3 Let's Play. And you voted for me to play as Persia. Persia is an unrecognized, so there's one issue, regional power. There's the second. We're ranked 39th in the world, so, you know, we're not the tiniest, tiniest little state ever. But we've got some work to do, definitely. Uh, we have a few vulnerable neighbors, and we have a couple of huge-ass ones, including Russia, uh, in the Ottoman Empire, which will likely kick off some conflict with Egypt and neighbors very soon. So it's a hotbed of lots of powerful people near us, and I'm pretty excited to see what Persia has to offer. Start off this game like any other. <laughs> Except we are fairly behind on the old tech tree. Jeez. Okay, let's get this cotton gin, shall we? <laughs> Yikes. Uh, good news is we are at least making some money. We're starting in the green. Let's have a look. Budget-wise, we've got our taxes right in the middle of the road. We've got plenty of authority. Let's have a look why. Distribution of power. Autocracy. Okay, cool. Good to note. We're also a monarchy at the moment, which I think quite literally might very well have us in the hands of <laughs> quite possibly the Prince of Persia. That'll be my goal. Uh, and we have the landowners in power as well as our religious group. Who do we have outside of power and how weak are they? Rural, armed, and intelligentsia. And then some marginalized ones. Jeepers, are they pushed aside? As I've recommended probably about a million times across a million different tips videos, we're going to slightly adjust our economy <laughs> to... Make a little bit of extra money so that we can start with some early construction. Uh, in terms of taxes, we should probably only look to luxury items or services. I'm not going to tax grain. It just hits too many people too hard. Uh, opium. I tend to stay away from this kind of thing, like liquor, etc. But that one is pretty tempting. 100 authority, 2.2. Great. Uh, we won't go too heavy, but we might also hit luxury clothes and tea, and <laughs> porcelain. Okay, we're not going to go too heavy. We're just going to raise an extra 7,700 pounds. We are looking pretty good. Uh, we could crank the taxes up a little bit or lower the wages, but at the moment I don't need to do either of those, so I might just save those in my back pocket for a rainy day in case things get wary or awful. Uh, oh man. Also, what is this early border gore? Yeah, uh, so looks like the state of Oman starts with this little bit of territory here. Uh, otherwise, these three neighbors are all pretty weak. Like if we click into them and go information, population, uh, buildings, overview, you get a general feel that there's not a lot of people here and they're not producing an awful lot. Military-wise, they're all likely to be fairly weak as well, except I think Afghanistan starts with about 40 battalions. So we might have to watch out for them. Uh, 20 at the moment. And 20 in the east. Okay. These guys, 12, 7, 6. Yeah. No. This is all fine. This is all fine. Our tax capacity is a little bit crap. And other than that, the only other warning I'm starting with is that I have unused construction. We're going to fix that in a minute. In terms of the tax capacity, it's in this northern territory of Persia. We've got actually quite a few regions here. Persia, pretty big old boy. Uh, this one up here, though, if we have a look at the population, 1.7 million. Okay, so this one is is pretty well populated, actually, uh, at 1.7 million. If we jump to different lenses, we'll get a feel for, well, the different political strengths in the regions, as well as the capital region. Pretty big. Uh, there are some other views that I don't mind using, but generally speaking, what I want to figure out at the start here is where all of my people are, because those are probably the regions that I'll look to build up first. The capital state is usually a pretty good one, but as I pan around here, it becomes very obvious to me that basically the further to the north and to the left, great compass directions. <laughs> <laughs> to the west, northwest are where our people reside, particularly up here. And this is the state where taxation capacity sucks. So I might just start by queuing up a government administration. However, that's actually probably not the best use of our time or money, because if I hit unpause, we're about to start making a lot of cash, and our gold reserves already have 411k. So two things. Firstly, 
let's get our construction rolling. Uh, and I think to do that, we'll probably start with a little bit of the construction industry, probably. Uh, what do we have of the sector already? Uh, the answer is basically nothing, naturally. Uh, we're going to build filtered by peasants, maybe, is, is potentially a good idea. And then to build where they are. As we already know, though, it tends to be up here in the top left. So let's put some construction, maybe three units of construction in this territory. And this one here is also all right. We might put one here. Uh, this is the capital territory, so potentially it's worth having a little bit there. And then we might focus on building these three territories up first, with a particular focus on Tabriz, apologies for the pronunciation, yikes, uh, up in the top left here. So actually maybe one extra for you. Now, as I unpause, I'll probably play this on maybe three or four speed. Uh, we'll start to see our costs rise, the temporary construction costs. We'll also start to get a feel for what goods we're short of in the Persian market. I haven't even looked. Do I want to? Luxury furniture is really expensive, but there's only five buy orders. I'm not too worried about that. Our services are pricey and we're taxing them. But then after that, it's clothes. Clothes is our first issue. Market price is a bit high. Looks like also fish, grain, furniture, really somewhat basic things. So the first thing that I might want to do is build a textile mill after the construction is finished. And I may as well queue it up here because this is a territory that we've already sort of preloading a lot of construction in. So why don't we queue that up? The other thing that I've just noticed is this government administration should not be at the top. So I'm going to alt click that down to the bottom. You'll, you'll see that these construction sectors are much faster to build. And that's why I'll want to focus on them first. They also provide what? P plus two to construction and a modifier to state construction efficiency. So it's generally a good idea to get a few of them online first. And it doesn't actually seem to be hurting us really at all. So let's keep up the great work, smash out some early construction. But I'm not actually just going to skip ahead yet. There are a couple of other things that I usually like to do at the start, and I don't see why a Persian game would be any different. Uh, firstly, this territory is going to drive me nuts. Omani uh, opinion of us is already <laughs> fairly bad. So I think what we can probably do is start to justify to take this. I'd like to conquer state. Uh, probably not all of Oman, although, I mean, we could. But generally speaking, war in Victoria 3 early on is not a great idea. It risks us losing a lot of our populations who we need to work. We could be pulled into giant conflicts, which is also not great. So what I might do instead is just look to take what really kind of feels like mine. Uh, it's this territory right here. We're going to expel their diplomats just to just to raise our infamy a bit. Actually, that's probably not needed. Instead, let's just conquer this state. Uh, we believe countries may join aside or remain neutral. And it's basically just all of our neighbors. That's okay. I'm going to start that diplomatic play. The first stage, of course, the escalation stage is fairly safe. However, as we start to move through, they could try and draw in allies, including Afghanistan, our neighbor. Okay, interesting. Uh, before that gets too crazy, though, I do like to have at least one big friend. Uh, border with the Ottomans could be a little bit tricky. Uh, although if I shift to the diplomatic lens here, you can see that actually it's just our relationship with the Russians. It's the only one that's really on ice. We have some really good friends over in India and some not so good ones. Uh, Oman hate us, naturally. But actually everyone else around here is doing all right. The Ottomans don't mind us. I might buddy up with the Russians as a major power. So I'm going to begin improving relations with them. We have now 540 spear influence. We're gaining quite a lot so we may as well use it. Uh, we could also look to improve or start to weaken relationships with someone else near us. Maybe a potential threat. Oh, and look, the Russians are colonizing the Kazakhs land. Interesting. Uh, these guys are our friend. We could look to move through one of these states and probably do it in a pretty unchallenged way as well. Looking at their population, it's actually this inland one that has many more people. Uh, this state here is really struggling. Uh, we could also look at their resources as well, of course, to try and figure out what to do. They do have access to but one fishing wharf there. 
don't know. Uh, for now, we won't damage relationship with anyone else. We might also improve relationships with the Ottomans as well, because they're both actually at a pretty poor standing, and I'd like to grab them on side and maybe focus any potential early expansion into these states uh, to our right. Much safer, I think. As the construction sector whirs online, we're starting to pay a little bit more. You can see the balance is dropping uh, just a fraction due to these construction goods. However, I'm hoping it'll stabilize around the middle of the road, especially at the, as these sectors, the actual construction of the construction sector, winds down. One thing I note, though, as I smash on the pause button here, is that fabric and wood is far too expensive in our economy. There's a massive, massive shortage of these. At the moment, we're full of stockpile gold, though, so it's not like a dire emergency. We're actually doing just fine. But what I could do is increase supply. I could do that through trade routes, but it's honestly a better idea probably to get people out of these subsistence orchards and plantations and all sorts of garbage and into actual logging camps. This territory here, we know we have some construction. So let's go one, two, three. It'll also provide lots of jobs for these people, which is great too. Uh, and we'll get some fabric going as well. Could just cram it all in the same territory. Uh, here I have a couple of options. We could do cotton plantations for loads of fabric or livestock ranches for a bit of meat as well. Uh, this territory, we did have a little bit of construction, so let's get uh, two livestock ranches here to attract some rural folk, uh, and then maybe also a cotton plantation up to north here, and what is absolutely going to be our star territory, and maybe down the line, something I haven't played around with in Victoria 3, if you have, I'd like to hear about it, please do let me know your experience, uh, we could look to move our capital or do something funky with the state. Uh, one other thing actually that I could do right now is also enact certain decrees. These are kind of like one-off bonuses. They're pretty useful. Uh, here we have ooh, a lot of the PB group living here. Interesting. The reactionary meritocratic patriotic group. Hmm. Because of course we're investing a lot in this territory. So this group's probably going to do quite well. What I was saying, though, is that actually we could add a little bit of extra support in here, like plus 25% infrastructure. Bam. Also, plus 10% state construction efficiency. We're doing a lot of building in this territory, so that makes a lot of sense. We could also do a greener grass campaign for another 75 authority. Oh, no, we haven't yet... Re <laughs> No, we haven't invented romanticism, so I can't romanticize this area, but when I can, I might. Oh crap, I completely forgot about the diplomatic play, but uh, as luck would have, have it, I missed the notification, but what's absolutely happened is, oh man, have said, oh man, we can't win this, uh, and they've just backed down, which is actually foreseen. I think it would happen almost every time you play Persia. Why would they try and take that fight? really bad idea for them. <laughs> um, and so we've just taken over this territory. Neat. We've actually really more just connected the the state of Laristan back together again, though, because Humpty Dumpty was a little bit broken, but now it's back together, and it looks like it has a lot of potential for livestock, wheat, fishing wharves, and coal mines. And from memory, actually, fishing wharves were a little bit of a weakness for us. So what I might do is get a slight construction sector going on in this territory. We can also do it on the state-by-state state view like this. So I'll navigate here, get two construction sectors online, and then let's make this like Fishingville, Tennessee, and um, crank up three extra fishing wharves. Because if our market hasn't changed too much, which I'm hoping that it hasn't, uh, fish, yeah, it's somewhat high supply. Although actually, I should still focus more of my attention onto things like clothing and now surging up the list, furniture. <laughs> Sir, we need more chairs. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, manufacturers, I'm on it. Consider it done. Uh, I, I generally tend to ignore the profit impact of expansion. It doesn't tend to take into account everything. Uh, and generally it can be ignored, although this stat can be kind of interesting to see where you rank in the rest of the world. We are not so good at furniture manufacturers, but just you wait. People will not only be buying their Persian rugs, but also their Persian chairs uh, sometime very soon. Speaking of sometime very soon, our economy is going to plunge into debt sometime very soon. 
Uh, you can see that the construction costs, these temporary national expenses, are costing us a few bob. Quite a few. They seem to be leveling out at around 20k. What I could do is raise taxes, or we could wait until our reserves are empty and then pause construction. We'll just go into debt. Uh, we'll be paying a little bit of interest, though. I don't really want to do that. Um, so I'm going to keep leveling up our technologies. Maybe we get romanticism at some point soon, but we don't quite need it yet. Instead, I think I'll jump to the budget screen as our reserves plummet, plummet, plummet. Let's see what would happen if we raise taxes. Okay, so that will provide an extra 6-9. That puts us nearly in the green. And then what I could do is either add another consumption tax or maybe lower some wages. This is a pretty safe way to raise a bit of cash. Uh, we could lose approval from intelligentsia or from the armed forces. Let's have a look at our political screen and figure out exactly who we want to shaft here. Uh, armed forces, 9.7%. Intelligentsia, 7.1%. Okay. Interesting. Do I favor any of their ideologies in particular? The armed forces are led by a moderate with no stance. Yeah, not especially. Uh, I don't mind so much. We're going to poop on the armed forces because they're at minus three. These guys are at minus four. It still puts them to minus five, which is somewhat frustrating. We will get a slight penalty, but hopefully we can balance that out by raising their wages again very soon. Another option that we could explore temporarily is to raise their wages back up and do my, <laughs> the one thing that I would never do. I'm so sorry. We could tax something like grain. Uh, it messes with the market, but man, it would save us. And it would perfectly, to a min-max level <laughs> of impressiveness, use up all of our authority. It's another option. We'll roll with it for a bit, and we'll see what impact it has on the economy. It may have unforeseen circumstances and impacts, but at the moment, it could nearly allow me to keep up this incredibly aggressive expansion campaign. We'll get our food supplies, we'll get our furniture online, we'll just run slightly into debt, and also, to try and make amends for this grain tax, I might just look to expand our grain market a little bit as well. Okay, that should be good. There's still heaps of arable land, which means there's going to be loads of people working in... Uh, Subpar conditions. Uh, all of this construction is also still putting a huge uh, resource strain on things like our logging camps. Look at that. Jeez, these things are profitable. Uh, we should expand them out another twofold and probably also get some extra fabric as well. <laughs> I know it's lame, but man, we really need to try and improve these industries. Uh, we could also look to improve exactly uh, what they do, how they do it, right? We could upgrade them to harvesting tools. This would put a uh, considerable price impact on our tools, so we may not quite be ready for that, but it would help the efficiency. So maybe a better thing for me to do alongside expanding those is also to try and expand our tools industry. If I can get some extra tools constructed, then we can give the farmers what they want. Better tools. Hey, speaking of tools, Jumbo, you tool, one thing that you haven't done while we look over this brilliant screen with some peasant information so we can see exactly where our people are. One unemployed, not good. <laughs> anyway, I'm a tool because I haven't actually tried to pass through any laws yet, which means we're probably operating on, yep, literally zero institutions. Not ideal. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, at least our economy is interventionalism, which is a pretty good one to start at. Uh, it's certainly better than traditionalism. Uh, we currently have racial segregation. We can't really do a lot on that front with the current parties that we have. We actually can't really do a whole lot of anything, uh, except for what's probably my favorite move, uh, and that's police. Looks like we have, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so we can either do the local police force, which will help the support of our landowners and decrease state penalties from turmoil, could be useful. Uh, or alternatively, we can reduce radicals from standard of living decreases and state penalties to turmoil. I actually think that that's just generally better. Uh, it will also give us a little bit of extra investment opportunity in the institution of the police. Let's do that. 48% as well is so good. We should pass that, no trouble. Uh, the other one that we can probably get through fairly soon might be a change around schools or the health system. 
those ones tend to be all right as well. And we're finally starting to get some story-driven events too. What's going on here? Uh, we still need a general, and there are pers and these are personal matters. Oh god! So we can lower their approval or increase the approval for the uh, armed services. I reckon I'll do that. Okay, so the wood market has definitely gone a little bit crazy, but it, it's <laughs> it's completely all over the show. When we're not constructing, it's fine. When we're constructing, it, it still goes through the roof. I've got a few more logging camps queued up. We'll squeeze up another one. I've got so much construction ready to go. Or, I mean, we're burning through it actually fairly fast. Uh, and we're also burning through our money fairly quickly. But as you can see, I have a fairly reasonable balance. One thing that isn't actually that reasonably balanced at the minute. Ignore that good shortages. It's fine. This is all fine. Uh, our battalions. We have 48 of these bad boys literally just sitting in reserve. Now, the thing about battalions is unlike conscripts, they're not our normal populations. And the upside to that is that we won't have to pull people out of their normal jobs, like here, to send them to fight on a front line. Instead, we have troops ready to go on our military screen. 48 regulars just waiting. The downside is, of course, they're costing us money to keep. And we're not really using them for much. <laughs> uh, we don't have a lot of upgrades for them, so they're still fairly basic. However, a lot of our neighbours will be as well. What I could do then is try and leverage them a bit, leave my conscripts, and maybe pounce on a little bit of extra land while the great powers are still focusing on themselves. And while, hello, <laughs> my neighbours are at war. Egyptians looking to come out on top as per usual. Yike, maybe we should buddy up with them instead and divide the Ottomans. Could be a fun play to start Persia, actually, and maybe worth considering. But there's also some low-hanging fruit. The terrain's pretty bad, but man, we could sweep through and grab some of this stuff pretty easily. Uh, looking through the information, though, you can see there's some interesting resources up here. Yeah. Hello. 46 opium plantations. Interesting. We currently have some capacity to expand that. Yeah, 62. Yeah, we, we, we've got reasonable capacity already. That would expand it considerably. Sulfur as well, another resource up there that could be worth a few bob to us and will be needed in future. And actually, as I span across, I notice we don't have a lot of that. Well, there's a justification. Uh, I mean, there's a little bit there, actually. Yike. Uh, the other resource, of course, that will appear down the line when we unlock things like oil uh, will also be a point of contention. But we'll worry about that later. Another option that we could do instead of conquering is actually to just kind of puppet or take over. That could be a better move for us. If the Russians don't want to intervene, they've just colonized Kazakhstan, basically, we could try and make a vassal out of Kiva here. Let's, let's see. Okay, so at the start of the play, we will face their 20 plus 5. So they're about half as strong as we are, and there are many countries that could join. The question is, will they? Could be worth a try. Okay, so the diplomatic play has just rolled over into the second phase. This is where people may start to choose sides. I could also look to add another war goal if I want, but I, I, don't, think, I don't think that's something that I want. Uh, it looks like nobody's going either way. We could convince the Russians to come on board if we offer make puppets or offer make dominion. Interesting. Uh, we could also bring the Great Qing on board for an obligation, but I think we might just not do that. We'll keep our infamy low. We don't actually need any friends. While that's ticking away, providing no one jumps in, I could activate my conscripts, but I don't think I will. I think we'll keep our peasants working jobs and just being normal people uh, and instead <laughs> look to send an army. Uh, we'll need at least one general, so let's recruit somebody, ideally from an interest group that we'd like to support, or one that's already in government, either of you two gentlemen will be all right. Morale recovery versus offense, defense recovery rate. You, my friend, are hired. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, we'll also need to, if we don't want to hire any more, give this guy a little bit of promotion uh, so that he can control all of our battalions. He actually needs a third promotion, which makes him really expensive. Probably not the best idea, but we'll do that. Uh, also, as we start to gear up to war, we'll probably, we'll definitely, in fact, 
need to pause our construction because the temporary costs of this will go away. They'll need to because we'll have some new temporary costs. Unfortunately, the costs of war. Uh, so let's pause our construction now because otherwise I will probably quite literally forget. I'll need to get on top of my authority deficit in a sec too. But, sir, shouldn't you worry about the war? Why, yes, I should. Uh-oh. And uh, this is not ideal. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring Great Ching in with us because the Russians have somewhat at the last minute decided to join the other side. Disaster mode. And our ally didn't come with us. Okay. So, in a situation like this, all hope isn't quite lost. We're going to mobilize our general, though, and we're going to send that general to this front line with Kiva. We also have a front line here with Russia. I know that. I'm going to hope that we could either ignore it, and they'll push, and we'll push, and we'll seize this before they can seize us. Or, if I have to, I could also grab some conscripts here and get them to defend. It would interrupt our economy, and we'd take some losses in the process, but it could be worthwhile to reduce the damage. Okay, checking in at this front line. My dudes have arrived. War has broken out. And uh-oh, SpaghettiO, the Russians had a last-minute change of heart. Oh my god, you couldn't <laughs> read about it. Okay, so I was prepared to just fully embrace that and see what happened. But the Russians chickened out at the very last minute. I have no idea why. Amazing. <laughs> I'm so stoked about that. That is so good. Holy moly. I'm going to stop improving relations with the Ottomans because actually I've decided I don't like them very much. Uh, and we're just going to stop doing that altogether. And instead, for a little bit, let's focus on the war with Kiva as we look to try and grow Persia big and strong and hopefully try and swallow up these states and, and some of these ones to try and grow greater Persia, restore it back to the greatness of the Persian Empire. Anyway, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself probably. Let's have a look at the battle. Uh, we lost the first one. Neat. <laughs> I'm sure this will be fine. This will be totally fine. Not to trouble at all. Their troops look, to be fair, actually probably about as well armed as we are. Uh, we have many more battalions than them. Supply is going to be an issue. The terrain is going to be really difficult. The good thing is we're not relying on conscripts. So we're using our proper trained armed forces here. And we outnumber them some two to one. Because we're not relying on heavy temporary costs, and actually our army's kind of already factored in, I was a little wrong about our construction before. Uh, mistaken. <laughs> Getting myself confused uh, with our conscripts. Actually, we're probably fine to just keep on producing. The state of Persia will continue to grow like normal. Although, this looks a little bit abnormal. Did we win a battle? If, like me, you got a little bit big for your boots a little bit too soon, and you find that the battles are either not going in your favor or, or maybe you just don't quite have the overwhelming power that you need as you enact your dedicated police force, what we could do is just recruit a few conscripts, put a little bit of pressure on the economy and give just a few extra dudes, an additional general perhaps, to really push through this front line. So if I navigate to my military screen and go activate conscripts, I will probably won't activate them here. This is kind of like our core territory where we're doing a lot of work. Instead, I'll try and activate it basically everywhere else. <laughs> we'll get these additional conscripts online from most of the country, except our core economic zone. Uh, and then what we'll be able to do is assign them to an additional general and push through even further through this front line. If it proves to still be a little bit difficult. Although, as you can see, we have slightly more offense than they do defense, so eventually we will be able to push through and take this. Okay, so additional general recruited. Let's mobilize this guy and slam him up on this front line. He'll take around a week to get there, which is no time at all in Victoria, especially if we cranked it up to five speed. You'd blink and you'd miss a week. Uh, now we have... Uh, 
plenty more units, but you'll notice it's still kind of our offense that is a little bit of a bottleneck. Uh, a few reasons. Firstly, our troops aren't particularly good. We should probably upgrade before we go taking on any more fights. Secondly, this terrain and infrastructure is really bad as well. Uh, we don't have railroads, but we could probably look to build this up, or at least these surrounding areas, a little bit more before we go reaching out for anybody else. Because this conflict is becoming a little bit prolonged, and you can see it's fairly evenly matched, I'm putting my armies on defensive mode just for a little bit. The front is not great, the attrition is not great. So what we could do is either wait for them to attack into us, they'll be unlikely to, as you can see, but they might, or we can just defend at the front line for a minute and then start to push back through again, go for a second strike. Either way, because we're slightly advantageous, we are actually ticking up, our war support is ticking up a better, <laughs> or at least it's not degrading as fast as theirs. Let's go in for another push. See if we can win any individual battles or if we'll just keep grinding out this war with our overwhelming number of units rather than actual firepower or even superiority on the individual battle fronts. While that bloodbath is going on up in the north, we're also of course going to focus a little bit on our economy. I see our taxation capacity isn't great in our main area. Let's get two additional government administrations online. My authority is still a bit crappy. What we could do is get rid of our grain tax. This will also free up a bit of extra income for the people. We've got plenty of cash in the reserves, so we can roll through a deficit for a little while. That's fine. We could actually, while I think about it, also actually use a little bit of that authority to kind of add some additional taxes. Uh, we taketh away with one hand, we giveth with another. Let's tax luxury clothes and tea to cover a little bit more of the budget deficit. Okay, and the costs of war have just surged up through the roof. It looks like something's gone wrong with our artillery. Our trade route with Russia is now uh, completely inactive. I don't really have a way to fix that quickly to help with this war. We could fix the supply line, like build them ourselves, of course, but that's not going to help right now. So let's quickly... Okay, we literally have no one. We literally have none. Yikes. This is going to make this very expensive and make artillery really hard to come by. Uh, on the positive side, we are starting to move towards a position where we can push them for peace. Their acceptance is getting better and better by the day. And oh my god. <laughs> While we were distracted queuing up some extra construction, uh, complete and total anarchy seems to have happened. We won a whole load of fights and we've broken through the back line, but they've broken through into Persia and we forced their capitulation. Whew. It was a really tough stalemate for a long time along that front. And then we were just able to push through. And as you can see, now they've turned the sweet, sweet yellow of Persia, baby. Yellow, Persia speaking. Whew. Okay, that was, that was pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I'm going to bring these wages back to default. We're actually starting to build up fairly popular support for our military group. So what we could do is put a little bit more money into them. It costs us almost nothing uh, to increase their approval with high wages. The wage is very easy uh, to move about, very easy. Uh, and at the moment, while we're not constructing anything, we can also bring taxes back down to a medium level and everything is looking great. Uh, now, because we puppeted them rather than taking them over, I don't have to manage them exactly, right? I don't have to go into each state and, and manage everything. However, we've forced them into our market and we'll be taking absolutely some of their profits. <laughs> We're basically just going to farm them for extra profits, and it's uh, wonderful to see. Fantastic. Uh, and here we have, by the looks, a political event. Oh, I'll turn my speed back down now that we're not pushing through that war. Uh, what have we got? Persia gets enforced segregation for five years. That would really increase our radicalism, which actually at the moment is on the decrease, probably because we just upped the military group's wages. Uh, we've also finished fighting, so... <laughs> People are generally kind of pleased with us. That's good to see. Loyalists on the up as well. Great. We've got great approval. 
Uh, our other option is that we just lose a little bit of interest group approval with the religious group. I think we'll do that instead of increase our radicals. Let's also have a look at our politics because I've not forgotten you, Laws. 18% uh, chance for religious schools. So put a lot more power in their hands. And it's here I kind of have to start to make a decision on who do I want to rule this country? What way do we want to take this? And, oh, this guy's disliked. I mean, he's only 12. With a chrome dome. Come on, leave him be. So after studying them for a bit, there are really a couple of things I want to consider. The first is that we'd like most groups to be within a, a relatively happy area. Once they get to minus five, they start to hit us with their penalties. Uh, and if they get too strong, overwhelmingly so, uh, we can get some really nice or interesting things out of them as well. There are a couple that I really like. Armed forces, if we can get them to loyal, they'll give us plus 15% on offense and defense. This just feels nice all the time. Uh, personally, I'm also kind of a fan of maybe becoming a little bit more capitalist. It's for that reason that I think we might look to reform the government, try and remove maybe the religious interest group, see what that does. Okay, legitimacy, still fine. Radicals up a little bit. Uh, and then bring in maybe the armed forces. Okay. I also kind of like the idea of having the intelligentsia in. They're not doing so hot at the minute, but let's bring in the armed forces. We'll go for a landowner armed forces government. You'll notice that'll change the kind of things that we can do, but it will increase a few policies that I really like. Uh, yeah, outlawed dissent. These, these are all pretty decent. We cannot remove the landowners at the moment. They are just simply too strong. They're also completely at the top. So we need to watch out for them and, and maybe try and weaken them just slightly. All right, let's confirm our land owning armed forces government for the time being. I'm also going to, I think, God, the trade unionists hate me. Uh, the industrialists are pretty loyal though. What I'd like to do is bolster them. I only need a little bit more authority to do that. So I've my budget screen. Let's slash one of these taxes. It's making like no money. T-tax. See ya. <laughs> it's literally doing not. Uh, and then let's bolster the uh, general attraction of the industrialists. And we'll try and move towards more of an industrialist-led government in future. However, now that we've got a new government, we have maybe a couple of extra toys that we could look to play with. Not a whole lot, except I can get rid of peasant levies, which is just a terrible law. It's giving the landowners extra strength, which is not ideal. Uh, and also, it's not really providing for our army much. A professional army is great if we want more barracks and battalions. National militia lets us conscript a whole lot more people. I love this one. It will weaken the armed forces, which is unfortunate but it's a good policy for us. I'm going to push it through. We also now have the Law Enforcement Institution. Uh, do we want to spend a little bit of extra bureaucracy on this? I think we do. Let's ramp it all the way up to level three, changing to level three in 101 weeks. This will give us way better bonuses on radicalism from standard of living, so they won't mind so much if they're living in poverty, and also state penalties from turmoil which means we can get up to some nefarious deeds. <laughs> I'm going to declare another area of interest. Uh, we actually already have all of these neighboring states within our interest zone. I'm not so interested in expanding into India yet. It's actually probably more the Ottoman territory that I'm fascinated in right now, or the Caucasus. Let's put our eye on them just for a minute. I know that we share them with, with Russia, or I've, Russia owned them at the minute, but you never know. Uh, the other thing that I want to try and do is probably fix this artillery shortage, because I can't go to war again with the price this high, and therefore, look at this, no sell orders, 26 buy orders. That's a freaking disaster. Um, taxation capacity is still problematic as well. So we'll ramp that up a fraction, and then let's fix our small arms market and our artillery. Uh, if I start with small arms, yep, price is pretty high. Okay, uh, we're going to need more arms factories. That one, fairly straightforward. I, I, I could have told you that, definitely. Okay, uh, let's get arms factories. Let's get maybe start with three of them in the capital. 
Uh, and then we'll also jump into the artillery screen. This one could be a little bit more complicated. Uh, actually, no, it looks like it's probably going to be fine. Just the old, just the old arms factories producing small arms. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, the Russians have opened up their artillery trade with us again. Let's nab some of those off the Russians. We'll build up our own small arms market. And then it's literally still just fabric and wood. These goods that we're just churning through as we try and produce things. Uh, so I guess I'll top them up as well. Let's get some extra livestock ranches. We have some territories that are really good for that. So I might chuck a couple in them just for fun as well. Provide some employment for those people, I guess. Uh, and then, of course, we could also look to turn that into furniture. Potentially in the same territories. Maybe the capital and this one as well, right? So we can build up the whole supply chain if we want to, or we can just focus in on those key resources that we need. Wood, the Persian people still crying out for wood. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Some of these places are starting to get quite full, actually. We're almost going to run out of capacity if we go too crazy. Boom. All right, we passed our national militia a little bit later in time. Minus 25% armed forces political strength. Unfortunate for them, but and maybe a necessary casualty because we have huge conscription rates. If we need to rely on that, we can mobilize 80 battalions now. Uh, also, you know, uh, general support across the board for some groups that we like, including industrialists. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to temporarily raise taxes a little bit. Uh, my construction was just costing me a few bob, but... <laughs> Don't fear, everybody. I'm just going to charge you through the teeth for additional taxes. Uh, so as you can see, we have a growing support for the industrialists and the armed forces up here. This is good because we want, ideally, the industrialists. We want to avoid their tax avoidance. And look at that. Job creators plus 10% capitalists investment pool contribution. And we should see them contributing a little more to our economy moving forward. What we're going to want to do to help that is probably give them extra job opportunities as well. However, first, I see here, maybe a way we can mess with these interest groups. Yeah, well, kind of. We can take away support for our religious group, but give it to our landowners. I actually don't think that's a good idea. So we might boost their approval instead and piss off the landowners just slightly. We do need to be careful of them, though because they are a huge group. Although, as you can see, their clout begins to fall. And maybe, yeah, look at that, our industrialists no longer marginalized. They are on the rise. Communists are happy with us too. Sorry, our trade unionists, they're, they're good. The PB, really liking us as well. We could get ourselves into some debt. Uh, speaking of which, I might start my construction again. Take myself back down to four. Jeepers, almost keep accidentally playing at five. <laughs> um, I've just queued a few extra construction sectors in because we are about to move through another period of significant expansion, as you can see, across a few different sectors. So let's try and support that where we can. I've got loads of influence to spare, so we may as well just start improving relations if we can. Uh, let's improve relations with Great Britain. They're ages away, but they do have a base down here in India, so... You know, they've got friends everywhere, so we may as well. We'll also bloody up with, uh, bloody up. Oh, jeez. Foreshadowing? Uh, we'll also buddy up with Great Ching as well. Um, and as the economy kind of ticks along, and sure, we're in debt, but, you know, we're, we're constructing. We're spending money to make money. It's all good. I start to think about some of my other goals, some of the things that I haven't quite looked at yet. Um, we don't really have a lot of decisions we could make just yet, so I, I'm pretty safe to move over that. Church and state, still a thing. If we want to weaken our religious group, really, we'd need to try and change those laws. So I could focus on that, or we could maybe look to try and explore, explore and expand out towards the greater Persian borders, too. Grabbing these states, potentially. <laughs> uh, actually... Even just going for another cheeky puppet play might be a good idea. Now, all of these guys kind of love me, except for Macron. Hey, Macron. Uh, what's the danger? We'd have Kiva as our ally. We would definitely face Russia as our enemy. Okay. The Russians would never get there in time, but we do share, we do share a little bit with them. The interesting thing, actually, about our relationship with Russia is that we kind of sort of 
have some claims here that we could try and push uh, into Armenia and grab those territories as well. I'll stay away from it for now, but we could. Okay, a quick check in at our market screen, and we can see that there are still massive efficiencies in the things that people really want. Most importantly, it's wood. These people are just crying out for it. And we're actually starting to run out of places to build it, but that's all right. I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, so we'll we'll continue to just try and get on top of that demand. I also think that small arms, I mean, there's only one sell order at the minute. These inefficiencies, pretty low volume, probably not a big deal. Um, I mean, the, the low price of silk is a bit meh. We could look to export some uh, to the Ottoman market, potentially. Make a little bit of extra cash money off that. Why not? Uh, anything else that we've just got sort of too much of, we could maybe look to do the same. Although nothing's really jumping out at me here, actually. Everything's pretty good. It's just some wild inefficiencies here in terms of what we need uh, that are our weakest parts. I'm going to expel diplomats from these two neighboring countries of mine. Um, just to really, just to really let him know who's boss. Uh, it doesn't really do a lot. It does give us a little bit of infamy, so we have to watch out for that. We don't want to completely uh, aggravate the entire world. So maybe I do one at a time. Uh, either way, we'll get them out of Kalat so that we can start to uh, maybe consider expanding over them. And then these guys who have Russian protection at the moment. But I reckon... Considering the uh, how we pulled the wool over the Russians' eyes before, I reckon there's no chance that they're able to get down here to defend this little state. So uh, I am going to unlock currency standards, which is fantastic, and then temporarily put a halt on our construction and look instead to hmm, vassalize, conquer. I, again, I think probably vassalize is the best move here. Let's move to make Macron our vassal. Grab out, extend along this coastline a little bit further and start to sort of put the squeeze a little bit on Kalat and Afghanistan, just that little bit more. <laughs> yep, it's going to be a little bit of a yikes next time. Join me where we'll look at a couple of different diplomatic plays, a very good one and a somewhat less successful one. Perhaps one was a little cocky. Either way, thanks so much for watching, and do give me some feedback as well. How long would you like these episodes to be? What country should I play next time? Those are two big questions on my mind. And until next time, I will see you in part two. Take care.